And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. And what a week it was. After a tumultuous 2020, many of us were hoping for a little more peace and tranquility in 2021, but not to be had yet. First, let me say this. Thank you so much to so many of you who called, wrote, and otherwise got in touch to say that you were praying for me, wishing me well, and hoping for a speedy recovery from COVID-19. For a guy that never missed a day of work in his life until now, it really did knock me down pretty hard. And I'm glad to be back. And I appreciate more than I can say the prayers and good wishes of all of you. So thank you. And the week began with the opening of the new session of Congress. And we began to immediately see the really radical drift to the left of the Democrat Party in charge of the Congress now. The House rules, where they said you can no longer use terms like father, mother, sister, brother, etc. I mean, at a time when our country is you know, so deeply immersed in real problems, this is the kind of stuff they want to focus on? I'm a proud father and a proud son, and I can't imagine not being allowed to use those words. But then they trotted out this Democrat member of Congress to say the prayer, which he punctuated with, amen and a woman. This is the stuff that middle America simply cannot comprehend. It's to them as goofy as it possibly can get. And they begin to ask questions like, since it's a Hebrew expression, can we even use that word anymore? And those little songs we sing in church, are they still hymns? And it just evolves from there. And of course, very sadly, two days later, we saw an all out assault on the United States Capitol, something most of us would have thought unimaginable just a week ago. And for those of us that have consistently stood for the rule of law, this was yet another defining moment because the rule of law has to be sacrosanct. And whoever breaks the law needs to be prosecuted. It isn't simply devolving into violence. Violence obviously is criminal and ought to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But before you get to violence, there are violations of the rules of society, the foundational blocks of law and order that we have always stood for. And bluntly, some of our friends on the left weren't so loud last summer in condemning violations of law and lawlessness and violence. So it is really high time for all of us to come back to the point where we respect the basic institutions of our government and the rules by which we must all live as a just, fair, and peaceful society. Sandwiched between those two days were the two runoff elections in Georgia for two U.S. Senate seats that ultimately determined control of the United States Senate. Now, Georgia has these very unusual runoff rules that provided for a truly anomalous situation where you had two Senate seats up for grabs on the same day and Democrats took them both, thus giving the Democrat Party a trifecta in Washington, D.C., control of both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue and control of both houses of the Congress. And in my judgment, that means that the left of the Democrat Party is going to aggressively promote their agenda. You already saw AOC and the squad making their demands. You saw House Speaker Pelosi saying that we ought to make the District of Columbia a state and others saying Puerto Rico ought to become a state, thus providing the Democrats with probably permanent control over the U.S. Senate with the introduction of four new Senate seats. And an additional element of the Green New Deal, massive tax increases, open borders, defunding of police, and the litany goes on and on. It's now going to be two things. One, incumbent upon so-called moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema to hold the line on the far left agenda of the Democrat Party, but equally for Republicans to begin to seize the opportunity that will come their way as a result of the overreaches of the left because 2022 looms right around the corner and with it the opportunity for Republicans to retake control of both the House and the Senate, which I think they will do as a result of backlash to the really radical agenda that we're already beginning to see in Washington, D.C. And of course, they say that the markets don't like undivided government. They like divided government, where not one party controls everything. But this week, what the markets do? 
The Dow is up at over 31,000, record territory, and the NASDAQ above 13,000, equally so. So a lot of those old axioms fly out the window as well. And can anybody still explain to me the phenomenon of Bitcoin? In fact, can anybody explain to me exactly how it works? Because I've talked to a lot of folks and never gotten a truly understandable answer. But it's up over 40,000, that's more than double what it was when we talked about it three weeks ago and I acknowledged that I had missed the boat. And this week, my son's hero, Elon Musk, became the richest man in the world. You know, it's a real tribute to entrepreneurialism and the entrepreneurial spirit that Elon Musk is now the world's wealthiest man. And he continues. He's talking about putting people on Mars within six years. I'm not betting against him. And finally, on another sad note, the world lost this week Tommy Lasorda, the legendary manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, a Philly boy who, as skipper of the Dodgers, broke Philadelphia hearts many, many times. But a great leader, a great man, a great baseball aficionado, a Hall of Famer for sure, the world will mourn the loss of Tommy Lasorda. May he rest in peace. And for all of us, that is the best 60-ish seconds of our week.